Monday. Um, pray that your weeks. I pray that your Monday has gone well and that your week will be a blessed one. Uh, for my loved ones in the states, um, I know your this week is Thanksgiving for you guys. Um, considering what's happening right now, I pray that you know that definitely will be. Um, I think it's Thursday. I'm gonna be a good week for you guys, nonetheless. Um, so I'm back here with. Uh, uh, <laughs> I hope not to be too long. Um, I want to try to get this done before sun sets here in Canada. Um, it's 4.14. I believe... Uh, um, it says 4.40... I guess 4.45. So hopefully I'll have this done before then. If not, I'll just use my car light. It's fine. Um, let me just check to make sure. So I didn't check... I didn't check to see if my sound was okay. Um, let me see how you are. Uh, testing one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's fine. All right. So I'm just going to pray first and then I'm going to um, do this. So, Father, I come before you uh, once again. I honor you. I thank you for. Your faithfulness, your goodness towards me, Father, as I prepare to do this, um, as your son again has instructed me to do. Um, I thank you for the words that was given. I ask, Father, that you once again anoint me and give me the unction in which to speak this as I ought to, with clarity, with succinctness, with authority. And pray that those that have ears to hear will, will hear what you want um, them to hear. Uh, Father, I I ask that um, I take dominion right now over this over this scope. Um, any interference, Lord, I render it null and void. That Father, only Your will shall go forth, and only You, Father, will get the glory, the honor, and the praise. That is to Your name, and the honor that is due the Lord Jesus, Your Son. And so I thank You, Father, for this. I yield this scope. I yield my, myself to You. In Jesus' name, Amen. So formalities out of the way um, for archiving purposes. My name is Gary Jean Baptiste. I am a follower and disciple of the Lord Jesus, and I come on here whenever I feel out of the Lord to do so, or instructed of the Lord to do so. I guess that's the same thing. So um, again, I hope not to be long because primarily because of the sun. But I mean, I can use my car light if anything. So um, so. This scope and this broadcast, excuse me, as I um, typically like to do, I like to give a genesis, a genesis as to how this came about. And so, um, this word, I'm going to say it's a word, came from um, a conversation that I had with um, a brother of mine today. And it was in regards to um, a post that I had posted on social media, a picture that I had, um, that I had posted. Um, on social media and the theme of the picture was centered around funny enough um, well not funny enough it was intentional um, my previous broadcast in regards to us being gates of heaven um, and that post was in reference to that a picture depicting certain things and so um, the, 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 the the theme of the conversation or the, 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 the foundation of the conversation centered around the picture that I used to depict the Lord Jesus um, and so the picture that I had was, wasn't a completely accurate depiction of him. Um, there aren't many that are even around anyway, um, as far as accurate depiction of him. Um, and so he expressed, um, his concerns regarding that. And that, um, I said, again, I noticed I said a conversation. It wasn't a debate. We weren't debating back and forth. It was a, a conversation. And so I, I, for me personally, I don't really engage in debates anymore. I used to when I was younger. I find that they're very counterproductive. They're draining and they don't make... It's more about proving who's right as, it, as opposed to being finding and unveiling truth. Amen? And so debates aren't really, for me anyway, particularly or personally productive. They serve to, you know, to prove, a, to prove something as opposed to uncovering um, and finding out truth. And so I, this was a conversation, I would say, that even though we had a, 
um, a bit of exchanges. Um, it was a conversation and not a debate. And so I honor him for that. I honor the conversation for what it was as it again birthed this particular word that I'm going to discuss here. And so um, there, there are going to be some a few things that I'm going to say that may ruffle a few feathers. But I know for me, as I've spoken about as far as the watchman assignment is concerned, you know, when you're called to be a watchman, you have to say what the Lord has you to say. It's better to be obedient than to be liked. I'm going to say that again. It's better to be obedient than to be liked. And so um, I have to say this. It's of, it's of the instructions of the Lord. And so I have to say it. And so when I say it, I know that the blood is not on my hands when I begin to say what I'm going to say. Not now, but I'm going to say as, as I go through this, I'm going to be saying some things or a few things that may be, you know, that may ruffle a few feathers. But nonetheless, I have to say it um, as obedience unto my Lord and Savior and, of course, my Father. So... Um, so again, going back to the, the crux of this conversation that my brother and I had, it was in reference to the depiction of the Lord Jesus. And um, he asked me, don't I know that Jesus is not white? He's not Caucasian. <clears throat> and the truth of the, about the way he's depicted in pictures, in many pictures, again, as I said, there are pictures that don't really necessarily, there's, not, there's really none really that accurately depict what the Lord and what the Lord Jesus looks like. Um, and so um, he asked me, do I not know what he looks like? And I know that he's not how I how he was depicted in the picture that I chose. And I said to him, <clears throat> um, you know, as far as and the and the, the reasons as to why he's depicted the way he is in many pictures, as as far as slavery is concerned, and etc. You know, the the Europeans and all this history of the things um, concerning the way he's depicted in many pictures. Um, and he asked me if I knew of these things, and I said yes, I did know of these things, and I'm aware of them. Um, and and I explained to him again my as far as the the lack of a true depiction available really that is around. But I my thing was that I wanted to there was a truth that I wanted to convey or bring forth that took that took more priority than actually the accurate depiction of the Lord Jesus, if that makes sense. Um, and so, but out of this conversation, I don't want to get into much into the details of it because actually at the end of it, it went very well. I praise God, you know, there's things that happened I don't want to share because they're personal to him. And so I will not share those things, but I will say that it, it, it brought forth a lot um, of fruit. And again, this is the part of what I really want to discuss. It brought forth a lot of fruit as far as himself. And I, I praise God for that. Um, but nonetheless, so out of this conversation, the Lord... Um, have me, had me say two things that I want to address um, that I want to because he two things I want to address and I want to bring forth because he instructed me to bring these things forth and the first one excuse me get some water and the first thing excuse me excuse me sorry um, the first thing that I wanted to say, and that I asked, that I a statement that I made, <clears throat> I, that I made, that I know it wasn't me, it was the Lord speaking through me, but it spoke to me also. It resonated, it really resonated with me too, and I realized that it wasn't me that said what I said. It was through the Holy Spirit and through the Lord Himself that really spoke this. And the first, this, two, these two things. The first thing was, um, uh, I'm just making sure I have my notes here. So the first thing was. You know, what good is truth if the fruits <clears throat> that it bears are corrupt? I'm going to repeat that. What good is truth if the fruit that it bears is corrupt? What good is truth if the fruit that it bears is anger, resentment, bitterness, offense, pride, contention, strife? What good is that truth? Amen. Not that the truth isn't good enough itself. What I'm saying is, what good or benefit is that truth if these are the fruits it bears? Are these type of fruits of corrupt fruit that it bears? Why, how then is that truth being presented? How then is that truth valuable? Amen. And so, truth is only as good as the fruit it bears. Truth is only as good as the fruit it bears. I'm going to say it one more time. Truth is only as good as the fruit it bears. And so... What good is knowing the... I'm going to read what I have here uh, verbatim here so I don't miss anything. What good is knowing what the Lord... Did 
Testing one, two, three, one, two, three. All right. Okay. It's, it's interesting, you know. I <laughs> I very very rarely get many calls during the day, and as soon as I'm going on here, I get calls. It's just interesting. But anyway, the the the, the word must go forth, and so. Um, Where was I here? Uh, okay, so yeah, so what good is knowing, um, you know, what the Lord just looks like, his ethnicity, um, or the ethnicity he was born into, let me frame it properly, the, eth the ethnicity he was born into, uh, if that truth fills your heart with anger, bitterness, resentment towards another person or towards another ethnic group, amen? Hear what I'm saying? What good is knowing the Lord Jesus' real name? His real name, obviously, is Yeshua, for those that don't know. <clears throat> and what good is knowing his Hebraic and Jewish heritage, and yet hate your fellow man? Whether you feel justified in doing it or not, considering what these particular group of people did to your ancestors. What good is knowing these truths if the fruits that it's bearing brings forth offense or hatred or rage or anger in your heart towards a particular or to anyone really, but again, a particular uh, ethnic group. What good is that truth? And so the Lord said this in John 8, 31 to 32. Then Jesus said to those Jews who which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then you are my disciples and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So what he said, what I, what I, the reason why I use the scripture is, what freedom is there in a truth that brings about a fruit of anger, resentment, and hatred? That's not freedom. That's not the type of freedom that, that's not the type of freedom that the truth that you know should bear. Amen. It shouldn't be you having these, these things in your heart <clears throat> towards another. Holding these things in your heart towards another is bondage <clears throat> and it's not freedom. And so what freedom is what freedom is there in this type of truth if it's if that's the fruit that it bears <clears throat> amen a perpetual um, anger offense towards another ethnic group and I'm going to get to specifically what I'm talking about later on when I'm going to talk about certain things but for now just going generally speaking you know what good um is knowing all truths, all mysteries, all revelations, and all knowledge, you know, whether in the natural or spiritual, if it puffs, puffs you up in pride. That's another example. You know, I personally, <clears throat> um, and this is not to be private, just to just use it as an example. I personally have seen the Lord Jesus face to face. I know what he looks like. I know that he's not a white European, right, with blonde hair and blue eyes. Well, blonde hair, a European. I know that he does not look like that. Amen. Um, however, uh, yeah, he doesn't look like many of the pictures that he's depicted as. I know this as a truth that I know, but what point is that truth or what good is even the encounter that I've had with him face to face? If that, again, as I said, puffs me up in pride, puffs me up or, uh, uh, bears fruits of contention or strife towards a particular group of people that may be depicting him wrong or depicting, depicting him inaccurately. Amen. What good is that truth? And that's kind of the point I'm trying to get across here. So whether it bears these kind of fruits of pride, resentment, bitterness, hatred towards anyone, or pride within yourself as far as all mysteries and all revelations, and you know all these kind of, all knowledge, all this knowledge. Amen. So much knowledge, and yet your heart is not, not I'm not talking particularly about my brother here, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying generally speaking, what good is all knowledge if first and foremost a puff ship in pride or it, 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 it the fruits of it allows you to hate another person because of their ethnicity or because even the actions that they've done remember we're supposed to walk in love primarily and that is forgiving those who have harmed us and not carrying any offenses in our hearts towards anybody amen so let me continue so of course we know the very famous um scripture we call it many call it the love chapter uh first corinthians 13 um the apostle paul outlines the whole you know, regarding love and charity. And so there's a part in here that I wanted to reference in ref in 
in uh, re relevance to what I'm talking about. So he goes, though I speak, and this is the, the first verse of 1 Corinthians 13. I'm going to be reading from the King James Version. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity or love, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. So you can, you can speak all the kind of tongues you want. Without love, it's just noise. <laughs> the many who speak in tongues and they have... Well, let's leave that alone. That's not what I wanted to get at, right? But, and it says, Do I have the gift of prophecy? And this is, what I, this is particularly the part that I want to emphasize on. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so I can move all mountains and have not love or have not charity, I am nothing. I am nothing. Further to that, Paul says this, in reference to, as we most of us know, again, just because something is widely known, still doesn't mean it should not be said. And so the account that he says, because of um, his uh, his experience to being caught up to the third heavens, amen, he makes, a, he makes an interesting statement that many of us know, but I still want to reference it in relevance to what I'm talking about here. So he says, Unless, this is 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 7. Unless I should be exalted above measure to the abundance of the revelation. So again, all the revelations he's received. So I should be exalted above measure. Above. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. What was that thorn in the flesh? A messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. So in other words... The Lord allowed this messenger of Satan to continue. As we know, many of us know, he prayed three times to have this removed from him. And the Lord said, no. He realized after the fact that it was because this messenger of Satan was allowed to keep him humble because of the abundance of revelation he was receiving. So the Lord's concern was that this, the, the revelations that he was receiving, all the heavenly realm experiences, he was, all the encounters he was having... It was a concern that because of the abundance of what he was receiving, that he'd be puffed up in pride. And so because of that, the Lord allowed, and now many have debated or, you know, theologians have suggested what or I would say who this messenger of Satan was. Many believe it was a thorn in the flesh as far as a physical ailment. Um, you know, I personally believe, so I tend to go towards the, those who believe that this messenger actually was a, it was a, some form of a, a demon spirit, some form not to, um, destroy him, but something was happening, some kind of uh, perpetual um, whether it would stood him to go to a certain place, or you know, things of that nature. I don't tend to agree that it was necessarily a, a physical ailment. Um, messenger, in the, uh, many times when used in this context, is referring to a spiritual being, amen. And so, I tend to lean towards that aspect of it that it wasn't, it was a, a, it was a spiritual. Um, buffeting to keep him humble um, but in the Lord's grace he found efficient and I said to the Lord personally I said Lord I said let it not be that I need something like that to keep me humble please you know um, even a physical ailment something like that let it not be for me personally that I need something like that to be allowed in my life to keep me humble I'm, I said to the Lord please Lord, let, that not be, let that not be for me and I, I'm sure many of you would say the same thing. You don't want any kind of, you know, perpetual um, circumstance to surround your life just to keep you humble. No, I don't need that. I don't want that. So um, anyway, let me continue. So another practical example of that, I'm trying to go as quickly as I can here. Um, but I'm not rushing, but just to be, not to dwell on anything longer than I need to. So another practical example of this is gossip. Now, gossip, as we know many times, and it's different from slander, as I, as I outlined in my previous broadcast in regards to slandering and backbiting, um, gossip is a little different. Gossip is, there's, there can be malicious intent, but a lot of times all gossip really is, is you speaking about another person um, without them being there, you know, out, absent of their presence. That's really what gossip is. And so at the base of gossip is a piece of information concerning an individual, again, that's not there. And so there's a, there's a discussion or a conversation being had about a person uh, in a, a piece of information. Um, so the point is, while that information is true, is the conversation that the, the people who are having that are gossiping, is it <clears throat> for the betterment of the person? Um, sorry, I'm just looking at my notes. 
Okay, is it used for the betterment of the person or is it used simply for conversation, for judgment, for um, to look down upon another person, for instance? You know, you find out that one of your friends, their spouse cheated on them or someone lost their job. Um, you know, whatever it may be, any piece of information that you, 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 you're discussing about a person behind their back, what are the intentions, the reasons behind this discussion? Are you praying for them? Are you... Are you um, is it, is it, are there, are your, the fruits that you're bearing in regards to this piece of information or truth beneficial to the person? Or is it simply, again, just conversation you're having, just to have conversation and to cast judgment or to talk or possibly even venture into slander or, um, or backbiting? What are the reasons for this particular conversation? Amen. And so that's another practical example of a truth being spoken, a truth being known, but what are the fruits that are bearing from this particular truth? Amen. And so we have to be careful. What good, what good is knowing a truth if it bears this type of fruit? What good is knowing it? Why do you need to know that this person, you know, is sleeping around? If if not to bear fruit uh, with needs of repentance on that person, as far as you praying for them and you even going to them directly and saying, "Hey, you know, now there's nothing wrong in a a rebuke, right? Where you rebuke somebody for an action, but to discuss." It behind, <laughs> you know, their back for the for 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 the sake of having a a good conversation, that's not producing fruits, a uh, good fruits. Amen. So let me continue. So the second thing now, and this is where um, I'm asking the Lord to give me the the the, the 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 to say this in love. This is where I may ruffle some feathers here, but I have to say it. And so the second thing that I that that I wanted to bring forth. Is that and the Lord wants me to bring it forth because it's important. It's probably the most important thing out of this whole broadcast, to be honest with you. Um, so what I said to him was, um, there seems to be more of a concern on your end for the race or ethnicity than it is the truth that I was trying to bring forth to convey. And so I'm going to say this, and again, I don't want anyone's blood on my hands. That's why I'm saying what I'm going to about to say here. So. Many of us, unfortunately, in the uh, many of us, even unfortunately, um, in the body of Christ specifically, hold our temporal identity higher than our eternal identity. What do I mean by that? Let me say that one more time. Many of us, unfortunately, in the body of Christ, hold our temporal identity higher <clears throat> than our eternal identity. What I mean by that is, many of us, in particular, in the black community, hold our race. And our, our ethnicity above our citizenship, our citizenship in the kingdom of heaven, at more important than our adoption to the family of Yahweh. We are first spiritual beings. Amen? We're first spiritual beings. If we were black or any race or ethnicity, let me make sure I have my. or any ethnicity, we are first spiritual beings. Holding offenses in our heart concerning our race is proof of that. That our disposition is determined. Thank you for reminding me, Holy Spirit. Our disposition is dictated by these realms of race. Not by the leading of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit, but by the dis our disposition is dictated by racial... <clears throat> Racial issues, racial, um, and concerning our race. Now, again, there's nothing, uh, what I'm saying here, I'm going to be careful or make sure I'm, I make a note of this or say this. Um, injustice, yes, there's a there's a place for it to be um, uh, a righteous indignation in terms of uh, injustices, right? But what I'm saying is, why is it that whenever this particular topic is brought up within our community, there's a trigger that's involved. It takes preeminence or it takes priority over our identity in Christ. Many of us, and I'm going to say this, identifiers ourselves as black before being a child of God. And this ought not to be so. And the Father is not pleased. I'm going to say that one more time. Many of us identify ourselves as black before being a child of God. And this is this goes for all... Um, uh, all races, really. But I'm speaking specifically because this is where I feel the Lord's heart is. Um, and I'm going to get to why in a second. Um, 
But many of us identify ourselves as black before we be before being a child of God. And I want to remind us of something. Or right, for those who have who don't know, or for those perhaps who've forgotten. And when I say, um, sorry. So let me just put out a reminder. And for those who do not know, before you received your DNA strands of code from your parents, your 23 chromosomes or autosomes from your mother and from your father that determine your ethnicity, the way you look and so forth. Prior to that consummation of the sperm and the egg coming together and those chromosomes coming together, the two, the, you know, the 23 pair chromosomes between you and your mother and your father, way before that process, not way before, but before that process, your spirit man came from another realm and from another world and entered the womb of your mother. Before all the chromosomes and autosomes were forming, something from another world came from Yahweh. Your spirit man came into the womb of your mother. It says in Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, when someone passes away or well, when the dust returns to the earth, this is Ecclesiastes 12, 7, when then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So your spirit man comes from Yahweh into the womb of your mother. And when you when those that are passed, it goes right back to that realm again. That spirit man goes right back to that realm again. Now, of course, if you... Let me be clear. Um, if you accepted the Lord Jesus as, as Lord and Savior, um, that is afforded to you. Amen. Um, and but what I'm saying here goes for even people who are not believers in the Lord Jesus. Anyone, any human being, when they're formed in the womb of their mother, their spirit man comes from another world. And that spirit man isn't white, isn't black, isn't Hispanic, has no race, no creed, no uh, ethnicity. Contains the DNA of your heavenly father. And I, again, I want to remind us that he is not black, he's not white, he's not Hispanic. He's light. He's white light, actually, as a matter of fact. And our spirit mans carry that, bear that same record. Our spirit man, or, or as Paul, the Apostle Paul refers to it as, our inner man is light. It's white light. So it's no, and when I say white, I don't mean Caucasian, right? I mean white light as far as the composition of colors, um, of all the colors, um, in the known universe come together when they are composed together and you can google this yourself this is not my opinion right um when you compose all colors uh together all known colors together and compose them all together they form a white light that is why when you shine a light through a prism often you'll see the rainbow colors come out on the other side <clears throat> that's it's when you shine that light it breaks down that white light into the composite colors that's where the rainbow comes from that's Yahweh's rainbow. Um, that comes from him. Where do you think that comes from? He is white light. Yes, he has a form. Yes, he has a, 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 um, a form, right? Uh, hands and so forth. I'm saying he's not a ethnicity. He's white light. And so that's why when light shines from him, these rainbow colors manifest themselves around his throne as you read in scripture. Many accounts of this rainbow. Um, and, I, and I've made some reference to this also in a broadcast that I did in regards to um, Satan, um, his fall, and who he was and where he was in his position in terms of um, in direct contact with Yahweh himself. And so, um, but those rainbow colors, the rainbows of, in heaven, and even the rainbow on earth, that's a supernatural thing. The rainbow is a supernatural phenomenon. It's not something that's scientific. It's, anyway, let me not get there. Let me just continue on and go get sidetracked. So the point is, that our spirit man, before we received our chromosomes from our parents, we were, we were a spirit being, primarily. And so that came before we received our, our, our DNA strands from our parents. And so that spirit man, our inner man, and that goes for all people, believers or non-believers, came from another world, came from Yahweh. And so that has no color, no ethnicity. So, um, no, again, that's not to say that... Um, Um, I want to be try to be general first. That doesn't mean that the, uh, that many of us don't. Um, that many of us. Let me just read what I have here. We don't. Now, this doesn't mean that many of us won't, don't, haven't, nor will continue to deal with oppression in some levels and persecution concerning our race. 
And that's in general, but specifically as far as the black community is concerned. That's not what I'm saying. What I am saying is that... Well, so let me backtrack. So that's not what I'm saying. But you are going to suffer a whole lot more persecution and attempted oppression concerning your allegiance to the Lord Jesus and who you are, your eternal identity in the seasons to come, than you are your ethnicity or your race. And I don't need to, you don't need to be prophetic to know that. That's in Scripture. Amen? The Lord Jesus himself said that. You're going to be persecuted for my namesake. And so, the question is, and again, that's, again, that's why I said it's not to negate the, the things that we have to deal with you know, within our community as far as the world's concerned. Uh, you know, job opportunities and so forth. And, of course, the injustices that are happening with the police force and so forth. These are things because of the evil of men, right? That's not, I'm not negating that. What I'm saying is, is that what is more important to you, as a, specifically now as a believer, what is more important to you? Your temporal identity or your internal identity? identity? Because the internal one is the one that's going to, when this is all said and done, right? That's the one that's going to remain and going to stand, not our temporal one. When we're in heaven, we're not going to be black. Even though we can take on a form of our ethnicity, you know, without getting too deep with it, just be practical speaking. But we, we're not, there's no male or female in the spirit. There's no ethnicity in the spirit either in, in the heavenly realms. It's not black or white, right? And so the, po the point is, which one is more important to you? And this is what the Lord is asking. Which one is more important to you? What, what takes preeminence for you? And the Lord is asking, ask yourself this. One should not be more than the other. And uh, he's saying you, f you should know which one is more important, which one should be more important to you as, as a believer. Amen. So the devil knows this. Amen. He knows this. And he knows the wounds and the scars that, you know, racism has in our community. Um, and he continues to use this to, you know, bring about offense and resentment, confusion, strife, another corrupt fruit. Um, he, he's well aware this is something, especially um, in regards to slavery, it's been it's been a, a, a 400 years, you know? It's a reality. Secondarily, a, um, a child of God. So that's really it. Thank you for those that watched, those that will watch. Um, I'm praying that we be mindful of Satan's devices, but more importantly, above him, anything to do with him, um, knowing that our what is our pray, what should take preeminence and importance in our lives as far as our identity, our identity in the Lord, and our citizenship in heaven, and we're children of Yahweh first, because we are spirit beings first. Um, those of the world will react a differently a certain way, um, but we ought, we ought to be light to them, to help them, to show them the way. Um, amen. Because at the end of the day, they are uh, children of God, though they do not know it yet. And we have to bring light to them to let them know that. Um, not, not to be of the world, not to, con not to be in covenant with the world, but to be light to the world. And so that's our mandate and our assignment. So that takes preeminence over our race, our creed, our identity, our ethnicity, as it ought to be. And that's the Lord's concern towards us as his body, as the church, as the ecclesia, as they say, and of course to the Father, as his children. So, God bless. Father, I just pray for those that will hear, those that have heard, that they'll hear it from a place of love, Father, that this is not to um, debate or, or, or contend, but just to bring forth information, truth, in love, Father, from your love, knowing that you're concerned concerned for your children, concerned that they are not seeing things from an, an eternal perspective and are they seeing things from a temporal perspective, that they'll put what's first first and not allow the adversary to trigger them in ways that would make them lose perspective or sight of who they are first and foremost, Father. We honor you, we thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So God bless you guys, love you guys. Um, again, even if, if it's for the one, if that one person can realize that this, um, that that mindset has to change, I know I've done my job. But I know now that my the blood is no longer on my hands because I've spoken it out. So whoever does hear will know, and then my job is done. So, shalom, God bless. I don't know when I'll be back, but 
Um, I'm praying all this. I, I'm praying the the interruptions were, uh, you know, the sun was there. Anyway, I saved it to my camera so I'll know once I take a look at it to see if it skipped or something. So, God bless. Shalom. Um, and if I don't hear, if I don't come back before uh, Thursday or after Thursday or the rest of this week, I want to wish my loved ones in the States a very happy Thanksgiving. You know, as best as you can, of course, because of what's going on with COVID and stuff like that. You know, love you guys very much and uh, keep me in prayer. And again, hold no offenses in your heart towards anybody. Um, forgive one another. Walk in love and walk in light. Amen. So God bless and shalom.